I had my spinal cord injury at the age of 25. Being 25 and learning you'll probably never walk again is one thing, but being 25 and losing control of your bladder is a whole other matter. It's pretty mortifying to know that you could be out and about in public and you could wee yourself at any point, and it really knocks your confidence to go out and about. The good news is, with a bit of practice and trial and error, it's very possible to learn how to manage your bladder so that things like this don't happen often anymore. Your bladder is controlled by your S2 to S4 nerves in your spinal cord. These are at the very base of your spinal cord, which means that pretty much every single person with a spinal cord injury, even those with a very low level spinal cord injury who can actually walk, will have problems with bladder control. When you have a spinal cord injury, your lack of bladder control will lead to one of two problems. Either your bladder will keep filling up and when it's full, it will then backflow up to your kidneys and cause infections and all sorts of other problems or it will just release uncontrollably because you can't control it and you can't stop it from weeing. So you'll end up having accidents and wetting yourself, which is obviously not ideal. Either way, you can gain control of your bladder by using a catheter. A catheter is a tube which you pass up your urethra, through your sphincter and into your bladder. And once there, it allows the urine to drain out through the tube. There are a few different types of catheters. Most of you will be familiar with indwelling catheters or Foley catheters because you'll likely need this if you ever go into hospital for any kind of surgery and therefore will most likely end up on one of these if you ever have a spinal cord injury. Indwelling catheters are catheters that are inserted into your bladder for a long period of time and the urine will just continuously drain from your bladder into a urine bag which will then need to be emptied periodically. Now in the long term these catheters are not really used by people with spinal cord injury and this is for two reasons. First of all, because they have a much higher risk of infection compared to other catheters, but also because they're highly impractical for most people's daily lives, because you have to carry a bag full of wee around with you at all times. The other main type of catheter are intermittent catheters. Now, unlike indwelling catheters, which stay in place for a long time and drain the wee constantly, an intermittent catheter is more like going to the toilet normally. You just insert the catheter when you need to go, let the wee drain, and then once the wee is finished, you take the catheter out. There are two ways to use this type of catheter, depending on your level of injury and if you've had any complications. The least common way is a suprapubic catheter. This means that you insert the catheter through an incision which has surgically been made in your abdomen, which goes directly into your bladder. The most common way, and the way that most people with a spinal cord injury, and the way that Craig uses, is to insert the catheter directly up through his urethra into his bladder. Intermittent catheters come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and it took me quite a lot of experimentation to find one which works well for me. And if you've recently had a spinal cord injury, we recommend you take some time to experiment with different catheters and find out what works well for you. If you're still in a rehab hospital, they should have lots of different varieties that you can try out. But if not, you can order free samples from lots of different catheter companies, such as Coloplast. We've ordered a few samples from Coloplast, which is where Craig gets his regular order of catheters from so that we can show you the difference between some different catheters. So this is the catheter which Craig normally uses and these two are some samples which we've ordered. So the nice thing about all three of these catheters is that they all come in a nice small packaging which makes them very easy to take with you when you go out and about. Now you can also get catheters in, which are much longer and much more bulky but we don't have any samples because Craig doesn't get on with them and they're very inconvenient to take around with you. So let's open these up and show you what the differences are between them. You can do that one. So it opens nice easily by ripping down the side. And you take it out. So this one, the you, you, first thing you'll notice is it's quite wet, but it's also quite flexible and it's coiled up in the bag. Can't open this one. Yep, and this is another flexible one as well. But this one is different. This one is very rigid. This one is much more rigid compared to the other two. Some people like using these rigid ones because they find you can put more force on them to get them through your sphincter. But when I tried them, I find that they got caught in my urethra and they could cause trauma. So I get on a lot better with these flexible ones. One big difference between these three catheters is that these two are just a tube, but this one comes with a bag on the end. So. Craig likes to use this one because it's very handy to have that bag to catch the urine in. If you use one of these two which don't have a bag, you'll either have to sit on the toilet and direct the wee into the toilet, or you'll have to use a urine bottle to collect the wee and then empty it into the toilet. The handy thing about having the bag is that you can wee 
in a variety of places. You don't have to transfer onto the toilet mm -hmm. and then you just empty the bag into the toilet when you finish with it. The other thing which I really like about this type of catheter is it has a plastic sheath around the catheter itself so you never have to touch it with your hands. Now this is much better from a bacterial point of view as UTIs are very common when you're using catheters. So if you use one like this, which doesn't have a plastic sheath around it, you're likely to touch the catheter, which means you have to be very careful about how clean your hands are before you use them. So you should always wash your hands anyway before you do a catheter, but you have to be extra careful with ones like this, whereas these ones give you a little bit more peace of mind because you don't actually have to touch them. So the chance of passing the bacteria from your hands into your bladder is much less likely. When you're at home, this isn't so much of an issue because you can get to your sink, you can wash your hands and practice good hygiene. Um, is when you're out and about and you might be in a really dirty bathroom where washing your hands at the sink maybe doesn't even feel that hygienic if the sink doesn't feel very clean. So it's really nice to have these closed ones for circumstances like that. So all three of these ones come pre-lubricated. They already have lube on the catheter themselves so they're ready to use straight away. But there are some catheters which either don't have any lube with them and you have to apply the lube yourself or they have a little packet inside the packaging which you have to squeeze and apply first before you can use the catheter. Now obviously it's much more convenient if you can just take the catheter and use it straight away. So that's what I prefer. And a much less mess. Right, so now let's show you how I catheterize when I need to go to the toilet. Right, so let's do a catheter. First things first, hygiene is important. You don't want to give yourself any extra bacteria. So wash your hands. So next I'm going to grab my catheter. I keep my catheters in a box on the windowsill here because they're easy to grab and there's a box of 30 so I don't have to refill them too often. So grab my catheter, put it on my lap. Next I want to get close to the toilet so that I can empty the urine bag once I've finished and also so that I'm close to the bin and I can dispose of the catheter once I'm finished. Breaks on. Because of the shape of your urethra, it's easier to insert the catheter if you're leaning back slightly. So, I slide forward in my chair slightly, like so. Next thing, open the catheter up, take it out and unfold the bag. You can dispose of this part. So the next stage, which I'm obviously not going to show you on camera, is I get my penis out, I take the tip off the end of the catheter, pull back the foreskin and push the catheter through the end into the opening of the urethra. You then keep feeding it through until you get to your sphincter. At this point, I sometimes counter a little bit of resistance, and I find if I just do a big cough, that can help get it through the sphincter and into the bladder. At this point, the urine starts draining into the back. So I'll just go for a wee and I'll see you in a second. Right, so I've finished, got the urine in the bag. The nice thing about this bag is it's very easy to open. It has a little tear bit here. So tear it open. Hold the top, hold the bottom, and empty it into the toilet. Then screw it up, put it in the bin, hit the flush, sit up straight and wash up. It's not always easy to find a disabled toilet when you're out and about. So instead of cutting our day short and heading home just to go for a wee, quite often I'll just go in the car. I keep a supply of everything I need to go to the toilet right here in the car. So under the seat here, I have rubbish bags and catheters. And in the glove box here, I have hand sanitizer and wipes to keep everything hygienic. Now the nice thing about the catheters I use is because they have a bag on the end, there's no mess, no fuss. And if there's nowhere to empty the wee straight away after I've been, that's not a problem at all. I keep it in the bag, put it in one of these rubbish bags, and then I can take it home and empty it into the toilet once I get home. When Craig is doing a catheter in the car, you can't see anything at all unless you go right up to the window. But if there are loads of people around while you're trying to do a catheter, you can just put a coat or something over your lap so that you don't have to worry about flashing anyone while you're doing it. Similarly, I don't have to worry about going to someone's house if they don't have an accessible downstairs bathroom. As long as they have a room I can shut myself off in, I can go into that room, do my business, and then all I have to do is ask someone to empty the urine bag into the toilet for me once I'm finished. So, don't mind me. 
So using a catheter is how you can go for a wee when you don't have any control of your bladder. But the key to not having any accidents and not wetting yourself is routine. Now we really cannot stress enough how important routine is for this. It really is the key to not having any accidents when you can't control your bladder. So Craig's routine is that he will do an intermittent catheter every four hours without fail. Um, and originally this was throughout the day and also throughout the night. So that meant that he had to wake up in the middle of the night to do another catheter. Um, now we've changed this a little bit and actually Craig will stop drinking a few hours before we go to bed. And that means that he does not have to get up in the middle of the night to go and do a catheter, but we're confident that there's not gonna be any issues with wetting the bed. When transitioning from an indwelling catheter to an intermittent catheter, there's gonna be a period of time where you have to retrain your bladder. When you use an indwelling catheter, your bladder gets used to just being able to release whenever it wants. So when you swap to an intermittent catheters, it's gonna do the same thing. So you need to start off with a short time scale. When I did my bladder training, I started off with roughly half an hour gaps between catheters. And then I slowly built it up to one hour, hour and a half, two hours, until I got to the routine I'm at today. So there are going to be accidents in this time. It's completely normal and happens to everyone as you push what your bladder can do. Yep, there were quite a few times during this period where I ended up getting weed on, but there's this one noticeable time that I don't think we're gonna forget. Um, so back in the day when Craig first started, using a wheelchair, he used to keep his phone um, in between his legs. So this was before we got the man bag that he now uses to keep his phone in. So there's one time we're just sitting around the table eating dinner and we just look on the floor and notice that there was some water on the floor. So we're like, why is the, why is the floor wet? And then we look up at Craig and we see that his whole lap is soaked and the phone that was between his legs, it was, completely drenched and that was the last time that that phone ever worked. So now we've learned from that, Craig does not keep his phone between his legs and he uses this man bag to keep his phone in most of the time. And the phone is also waterproof as well, just in case. So even with the bladder training, it might not be enough. You might need some medications to help you out. Now your bladder is a muscle and like all muscles below your point of injury, it's susceptible to muscle spasms. And when your bladder spasms, then you may have an accident. Now, you might want to take some medications to help you out with this. There are a whole host of medications which can help, but there are two medications which I take, Mirabegrom and Solifenacin. Now, these are both muscle relaxers which target my bladder. So, they help relax my bladder and reduce the number of spasms I have, and therefore, reduce the number of accidents I have. This really was the turning point for us in terms of being able to go out and about confident that Craig would not wear himself. Before this, with the routine, he'd sometimes be able to go for four hours, but sometimes he wouldn't. So sometimes it would be three and a half hours and then there'd be an accident, or even sometimes we'd just be about to go to the toilet and there could be an accident. But as soon as Craig started taking this medication, this really was the turning point with getting on that four hour routine and being confident with being able to go anywhere without weeing himself. Unfortunately, when you have a spinal cord injury and you have no sensation in your bladder and you can't tell when you need to go, there's always gonna be that chance that you may wear yourself, even when you have the perfect routine. Luckily, once you've got your routine established, these instances are gonna be very few and far between, but there are a couple of things that can cause this. The first one is drinking a lot more than you're used to. So you do have to be very careful about how much you drink. And if you do drink more than usual, be very wary that you might need to go and do catheters more than you normally do. Um, but the second reason, uh, which is very notorious for causing you to have accidents if you have a spinal cord injury, is a urinary tract infection. Now UTIs are very common when you use catheters, and we did touch on this earlier in the video. But if you want to see more information and want us to make a video all about urinary tract infections and how to avoid them, then let us know down in the comments below. If you found this video useful, remember to give it a like and subscribe and click on the bell button to see more videos like this. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.